Good morning, first time speaking. We're now heading south on our way back to the eastern Adriatic, where we'll be starting our last patrol before heading home in 10 days' time. In area, the pattern of enforcing the UN arms embargo against the former Yugoslavia remains unchanged, and we'll soon commence challenging, and when necessary, boarding merchant vessels inbound to the Adriatic. Our current course will take us close to the Greek mainland, and then through the Corinth Canal, shortening our passage time back to the Adriatic. I hope everyone made the most of the run ashore in Istanbul, and I'm sorry we left earlier than expected this morning. That's all. Well, we'll only had one incident from last night, is the um, senior rate came back offshore approximately about midnight, he complained that he'd been assaulted by one of the junior rates. So obviously this morning I've got to carry out an investigation and as it's transpired that person, a uh, junior rate, is alleged to have struck a senior rate about three times. It's going to turn out a serious offence, obviously, the junior rate striking a senior rate. At the moment we're taking statements from witnesses and we'll possibly proceed with disciplinary action from then onwards. Um, the last day we was in Istanbul, went to the casino, uh, won a lot of money and had it lifted from the pocket. Uh, along with my ID card, which uh, causes various problems. After the casino, we moved on to a club, and there was a petty officer there, senior rate. We had a big heated argument over money, because uh, I obviously just had all mine stolen. And he was basically rubbing me up the wrong way about the fact that he's on a lot more money than me, and he's loaded. And So what happened there was uh, we had a big argument, and as soon as I come on, back on board, the, uh, the duty petty officer turned around and said, well, there's been an allegation made for assault. But the way it's looking is he said I slapped him a couple of times. However, I'm denying it. And uh, <clears throat> there's been no witnesses, to my knowledge, that said they saw anything. They just uh, heard an, an argument and that was it. On the 2nd of November, Sir Peel came on board the ship at the early hours of the 3rd of November in the morning and reported to the officer day that he had been assaulted. He stated it was by a junior rate, uh, an LWEM. Uh, he was slapped in the face three times and um, he was told he was a wanker. I've came up with four charges. The first one is loss of identity card, which apparently was whilst he was in the casino. He was alleged to have been pickpocketed, but his identity card was wrapped up in the, the money at the time. The second charge is drunk on shore. In the actual statements in front of you, two of the petty officers actually state, in their opinion, he was actually drunk. Uh, P. Ornsworth is of, uh, in the it's statement. because he says, um, he doesn't quite say that, does he? He says... Yeah, he actually states that um, he was worth the wear. Yeah, okay. We then come to behaving with contempt. Right, the behaviour with contempt. Assault. That actually happened in the pub. When the old wen was asked mm. by myself if he'd called him a wanker, he replied yes, and also the gestures, he replied yes. So it's all an accusing name, so it's a uh, self-confession, really. The worst one, I'm afraid, is the, the fourth one. Um, there isn't a lot of evidence towards it, apart from the PO himself stating he was uh, slapped and punched twice. At a first glance, do you feel you can prove the assault? Um, personally, yes. The main worry is it's a senior rate against a junior rate. So it's, as far as I'm aware, it's my, my word against his. Now, <clears throat> what looks good in his favour is the fact that everyone sees us having an argument and I don't deny that. And then uh, when he come on board, apparently he's, he's got a, a slight bruise under his eye. Now, however he got that, I don't know, but uh, he may feel that he wants to get his own back on me because of the argument we had. And, he can just put two and two together and say, well, yeah, L.M. Glavin did that, so... Not everybody's on his side. I mean, I mean, 99% of the ship's on his side. At the moment, we're left with um, strong circumstantial evidence. Mm -hmm. Strong-ish. Um, certainly the medical side of it. Um, but other than that, we come down to uh, his word against. Yeah, so it's one word against the other. And the more you read into it, the more you find yourself asking the question, you know, whether was everybody looking away? I mean, nobody appears to have seen the key moment. How strongly do you feel about the uh, ID card business? Well, it's a separate incident totally as to uh, the one in the pub. That's straightforward and clear cut. You should actually plead guilty for that one because straightforward problem for a case. No one can Sir! No one can Question. Oh, cats! No one can sir. They did, on the 2nd of November 1994, lose his Royal Navy identity card, form S1511, issued to him for his use for naval purposes. No, I'm glad you understand the charge. Yes, sir. I shall try this case myself. If I find you guilty, I may punish you myself or pass you on for punishment, depending on your record. Do you plead guilty or not guilty? Guilty, sir. Feel good, sir. When done! Yeah. Salute! When done, can you confirm 
that you was in the casino with Elwem Gladman on the night of the 2nd November. Yes, sir. Can you tell me what Elwem Gladman was doing in the casino? Uh, during the night, sir, we were actually playing roulette and blackjack. Can you, can you state how much Elwem Gladman was winning or losing? Uh, he was winning quite a bit, actually, sir. Can you tell me how much? He told me he had about 25 million Turkish lira tops. No more questions, sir. Was that winnings that he made for about 24 million? Yes, sir. The end of it? Yes, sir. Up to the stage you knew? Yes, sir. Right. Thank you. Right. Salute. Left turn. Quick march. Yes, sir. Owen Gladman, where were you keeping this money? In my back pocket, sir. With my ID card. It was just loose. It wasn't in a wallet, sir. I then raised the alarm with the security staff, sir. That was all your money, completely gone? And everything, sir. Not a penny left, sir. How much money did you go in there with? A hundred pounds, sir. Right, L.M. Gladman. There are two points I'd like to make. The first one is that it's a security risk and that the loss of ID cards actually compromises that security. I'm happy that the circumstances and the evidence that's been given to me would tend to suggest and prove that you lost your ID card through theft. But there's one other point that I'd like to draw out for you, and that's that you took, whether you took reasonable steps with the care and preservation of that ID card. Putting it in your back pocket, along with £400 money, as you put it, a packed casino, I don't think is entirely taking reasonable steps with care and preservation. Is that clear? Yes, sir. OK. Acquitted. Acquitted. On cap. Right turn. Right wheel. Quick march. Thank you very much, Master. I'm on my way out. I always feel that they, they feel they have to uh, have a little dig, no matter how innocent you are. There's always that little element of a, a dig at the end. You know, to, to perhaps be a little bit hard on them. But yeah, that went, that went all right. Went all right. That was one down. One down. Three to go. So we'll see. Keep things crossed. Good morning, first time speaking. We're now lining up on a westerly heading for the entrance to the Corinth Canal. For those of you, and I'm one of them, who haven't actually been through the Corinth Canal, it's one of the most extraordinary examples of late 19th century engineering. It was opened in 1893, six miles long and just over 26 feet deep, and joins the Aegean and the Ionian Seas. Once we're in it, only 15 feet either side, and the pilot and the tug making sure we don't come near to either side. By actually going through the Corinth Canal, we will be saving 100 miles of the trip and we'll get into area a day earlier. That's all. Captain. Am I a strict captain? Well, that's an interesting question. It, I, I work on the principle that uh, it's best to be consistent, uh, and uh, so certainly I want to make sure that people know where they stand. We have a scale of punishment for, for standard offences, but having said that, many of them need to be looked at individually. I mean, the, the overriding thing is me, a single judge and jury, 
I've got to be clear beyond reasonable doubt that, that I can correctly apply justice. I've, read, I've had a quick scan through these statements that the first gave me last night and your charges. Uh, right, well, who wants to take me through it? I'll start for a minute, sir. First charge being was on 2nd November 94, drunk on shore. Statements from Petty Officer Witter and um, from Petty Officer Unsworth both state the fact uh, that, in their opinion, Gladwin was drunk. Unsworth's statement says that he was on the, um, just refresh my memory, he was under the, under the weather, or something worse to that effect. The worse for wear. Here we are. I think it's Yeah. Appeared worse yeah. for wear. And say, well, in his opinion, was he or was he not drunk? He stated he was drunk. So that would be straightforward, sir, by the two petty officers. Something you must take into their consideration as well. The two petty officers had been drinking themselves. Drunk returning on board is, is a higher scale than drunk on shore, is it? Drunk on yes. board's a higher scale. Oh, so that's the worst, yes. Yeah. But where does drunk on shore compare to a drunk returning, the returning drunk on board? The lower part of the scale. Yes, that's that's all. Well, the second charge, uh, with contempt, but also in his statement, states that um, Gladman actually called him a wanker and gestured with his hand being closed, though he was doing the, um, the wanking movements. Um, Gladman, I asked you in the Q's and A's whether he actually stated this, and he said yes. He since came back afterwards and, and he said he misunderstood the question at that time. I think it will be quite difficult to put that kind of gloss on it yeah. um, in view of everything else. Right. On the third chance, I think I'll hand over to the, the supply officer for this one, sir, because he's got um, various things he wishes to point out. Yes, it's assault, um, in my view, um, can occur, well, obviously can occur between individuals of the same rank and in military personnel or civilian or whatever. My concern um, in talking to the Marshal Arms was that we hadn't, by charging him with assault, included the dimension that uh, he was actually having a go at somebody, allegedly, who was his superior officer. Um, and you could charge him under Section 11 with um, using or violence to, yeah. uh, to a superior officer. Going back to assault for a second, if you charge somebody with that, so you don't actually have to connect with the blow. Hence, there's no charge of attempted assault. So that charge, if we stuck with it, would enable you to deal both with a situation where somebody, for example, said, yes, I saw his hand strike his face, or somebody say, well, no, there was a great flurry of activity, I held him back, maybe these things might be said, but I didn't actually see the blow land. We haven't got anybody who actually says there, who actually saw um, any arm being raised, I see what you mean. any connect. Right. But in that case, you charge him with offering violence, and you're in the same league as that type of assault, which doesn't actually involve a connection, but causes the apprehension of danger. So you say we haven't got any evidence as well that said he offered violence. Not yet. No. Certainly. This is this is this. As I was saying, I can only go by with the evidence I have in front yeah. of me. He must come to the table charged with something to do with yes, one, under can. one of those sections, can, under assault or striking. Also, watch this seven set trap. They're in a one eight zero at fourteen miles. We have a one outbound. Mediterranean one outbound merchantman bearing a 208. This is watchman 90. I intend to send a boarding party to examine your manifest and cargo in accordance with the United Nations Security Council resolution 820. And no harm will be done to your vessel, your crew, or your cargo. Okay, this is a quick brief. The vessel name is OSA. Okay, it's a Croatian ship uh, going into uh, Raika. Cargo is 300 tons of citrus fruit. Okay, there's uh, 17 people on board, 15 crew, and two female passengers. Okay, two people on the bridge, two in the engine room. The rest will be mustered in their crew room or saloon, as they call it. Master is very helpful. Speaks good English. Let's see it being a major problem. So uh, first thing should be ready to dismount in a couple of minutes. Sea boat, the boat, yes, will come alongside yeah. with some more people for me to help search. Okay, <laughs> okay, okay, we'll get there. Oh. This is Watchman 90. Watchman 90. This is Watchman 90. I'm going to request you alter your course to 180 and reduce your speed to your minimum speed possible. Over. Put your lights on. You're the engineer, sorry. If you can come with me. Just, uh, create a bomb, create a fruit down here. We're going to go to the back of the bird. Yeah. 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 Y
Yeah, it's uh, 300 tonnes of grapefruit. Roger, the search of the accommodation has now been complete. The holds have been checked and are clear. The engine room has been checked and is clear. All other compartments have been checked and are clear. Recommend this vessel can be cleared. Over. This is the BBC World Service and we begin with the news headlines on Saturday the 5th of November. There has been heavy fighting throughout the day in northwestern Bosnia as Bosnian Serb forces try to halt the advance by the mainly Muslim government army. And newspaper reports in Britain have alleged that the leading footballer, Bruce Grobelar, has accepted bribes from an Asian gambling syndicate to lose matches. You've been a sea for a while, you do tend to get on everyone's nerves. Basically because of the closeness of it all and living in and out of each other's pockets. It's, there's no space on board to which you'd call your own. So you always feel invaded no matter where you are. That does cause a lot of friction, uh, like I say, especially after you've been at sea for a while. You just have to grin and bear it. Lord God, keep under your protection all those whom we love. Yeah, I was, uh, I was due to marry early August. The wedding had to be cancelled. Uh, the relationship is no longer on. Whether this draft is a cause of that breakup of the relationship, I don't know. But I was a bit pissed off at that, simply because I was told that I wouldn't go to sea till November, and which is the reason why I picked August to, for my wedding. Uh, and then I basically the, the, the Navy turned around and gave me a custard pie and said, you will go to sea. I did all that I could to get off this trip, but uh, they weren't having that. Pour into our hearts such love towards you. I understand there's a job that's got to be done. However, I don't think for a minute I'm the only LMO that's stuck shoreside. I mean, there's plenty of people that could have done what I'm doing. But however, the job has got to be done. After all, that's what we signed on the dotted line for. So the Navy's got us by the short and curly, really. This is the word of the Lord. God. Proverbs 6 cautions us against folly, laziness and wickedness. Do you think you're cut out for marriage? Well, I don't know. I don't suppose anyone knows that if we're cut out for marriage. I don't know. Oh, what's the divorce rate now? One in three, innit? So, probably more now. I don't know. It's something... Well, I thought I was. However, I didn't even get that far. But, uh, who'd have known it might have only lasted a week after, after the date. I'll never know though, will I? Not now. You have wonderful, sir. How went Gladden? Archie Elbow Wall, Gladman! Off cap. How went Gladman, sir? The first charge reads. Was on the 2nd November in 1994, drunk on shore in Sherlock Holmes at Public House, Istanbul. Second charge reads. Quick look. You want to have a look? Yeah, see what you think. Look. Can't copy anybody else, obviously. Mm. 50p, quick whack. Maybe made a 10 on it. Never know, could be lucky. Anybody else want to have a shot in there? Yeah. They'll speak to you. What we're doing is a little bit joviality. The boy's getting done, so, but you've got to have a laugh at it or else it'll just drag you all down. So you, you have a wee sweep state. 50 pence in. I mean, we just basically guess what he's going to get. I a big fine, some sort of punch of boss, a badge or his rate or whatever. And the closest wins all the money at the end. Like, it's just a bit of humour. Kind of thing that happens. Nobody's got any sympathy for you in the Navy when you get done. They all just try and make money with it. Make him walk a plank. This is naval humour, yeah. Blunt, very blunt, very harsh. But it's a good laugh. Ellen Gladman, do you understand those three charges? Master, you don't mind the facts. Sir, I have the facts of the case for the prosecution, sir. On the 3rd of November 1994, sir, Petty Officer returned from night leave and made a report to the officer Day. He stated the fact that he was struck by Owen Bladman. At the moment, we've got like the biggest fines up to 600, what, 650 quid. Sharky at 400 pound. It's a bit easier, that one. Naval humour, it, it sounds as though it's really nasty. Nobody really wants to see anybody go over the wall or lose their rate or anything like that because of the close community we live in. 
everybody's living in each other's laps all the time, so I suppose we wind each other up all the time. We're testing them all the time. How far will they go before they break? I and mean, that sounds really nasty, how far will they go before they break, but it's not. The Navy themselves can put us in testing scenarios, but we take it even further. But that's just the way we are. Also during that conversation, sir, he was alleged to have struck POWA with his right hand to the right side of his face, sir. Those are the facts appertaining to the three charges placed in front of you, sir. Those are the facts of this. Thank you. Ellen Gladman. Well, I consider that the charges, if proved, would probably justify your punishment being at least disrating. Because of the possible seriousness of the consequences, you now have the right to be tried by court-martial if you so desire, or alternatively, you can be tried summarily by me. You have 24 hours for consideration, and when you've reached your decision, you must let me know whether you wish to be tried by court-martial or to be tried summarily by me. Do you understand that? We will now have a standover for you to make your decision. 24-hour standover. 24-hour standover. To halt Ho! On cap. Right turn. Quick march. Good to kill for standover, sir. It's a big decision to make whether to opt for summary trial by captain or to uh, opt for court martial, which then I'll get a proper barrister and jury, that sort of thing. Yeah. What will happen there if I choose to be tried by the, the captain? If he finds me guilty, his decision is the final, no matter what happens. Summary punishment is a total farce because when you go up to the table, when you go up there, basically what you're going up there to find out is what it's going to cost you. you. You have mitigation, which you hope will reduce your punishment. There's no yes, no, are you guilty? They know what they're going to give you before you even walk in there. I've been in trouble once or twice, or three times, but the thing is, is that each time I've gone up there, I don't think I've had a fair trial. It's not been a trial, it's been a showcase. Well, it's not so much the fine heavily, but uh, the loss of rate will be, uh, will obviously uh, constitute a, a job in pay, and it'll be over X amount of months. Now, I'm a single man with a high mortgage, if it was a lot of two persons and all which however that I'm now I've now carried that on on my own for various you know personal reasons uh, so I'm struggling as it is anyway uh, so that's why I don't take this situation so lightly what I'm worried about is that if they decide to make an example and they do do that occasionally purely and simply to frighten other people from doing the similar sort of thing and they come down really heavy on those people so I'm hoping that isn't the case in this instance. The Naval Discipline Act gives the commanding officer of a warship very wide-ranging powers of punishment, called summary punishment because he can, he can meet it out himself there and then. Um, and one particularly challenging factor that we have to take account of is that in this small and intensely living community, everybody knows everybody else. And there is a particular requirement for objectivity laid on the command and laid on those who, uh, whose job it is to advise. It is not the easiest thing to sustain in a community like this. And that's all the more reason for absolutely ensuring that we absolutely do. But it is possible to view the inevitable subjectivity that, and perhaps sometimes the, the taking of sides that occurs perhaps throughout the ship's company in a positive light, because you get just such a huge welter of feedback. I mean, it doesn't affect what in the end is done, but it is an alternative source of, of information that you can listen to with the appropriate kind of ear. Dean's on five days and 200 quid. Tony, that's you, innit? Mm -hmm. Right, Tony. 400, loss of badge, seven days, tens. Chats is case dismissed due to your lack of evidence. Stu, 220 quid. But you've got to get exactly on the money, you're not getting it. A bloody good spanking as well, that, that's from a steward. So, court martial ashore or captain on the ship? Have you made a decision yet? Uh, yeah, I think I'll, I'll possibly opt for uh, trial by the captain. Um, I don't think there's enough here to go for court martial, so. Uh, See what happens. Play it by ear. Fingers are crossed anyway. I'm quietly confident. Quietly. But, uh, in saying that, I'll probably go over the wall tomorrow. Yeah. So. <laughs> 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 SEC bridge starts at the start of time. We've cleared set 5 8 heads. We've cleared 2 8. We've cleared port, port 10. Port 10? I think we say it. He's the 5. She's been out here for about the same time as us, probably about a week longer, and she's now going home. So there's 
an elated mood inside Nottingham at the moment because they're going home. They've just finished the stores transfer, passing all our mail and stores over. And as soon as this is done, we're going to turn around to the north and put her a stern and then in the traditional wave, and she will come up the port side and with their ships coming on deck, sort of waving and shouting wonderful things to us. Um, and it's traditional to have hoses, coloured smoke, flags up and everything else. <laughs> Mostly the ships trying to outdo each other. What we've got lined up is we've got hands on the launcher that wave goodbye to them. We've got coloured smoke coming out of the funnel, I hope. We've got flags up, some with a meaning, some without a meaning. Um, there'll be music playing over the update broadcast, which we hope they should hear. It, it should look quite spectacular. Owen Gladman, you've had a um, little bit more than the 24 hours delay now to consider um, how you wish to be tried on the three charges that were read out the uh, day before yesterday. Have you come to a decision? Yes, sir. And how do you wish to be tried? By you, sir. By me. Yeah, I shall now proceed to try this case myself. Master, would you read out the, Aye, sir. the charges? The first charge reads. This is Watchman 90. I intend to send a boarding party to examine your manifest and cargo in accordance with the United Nations Security Council Resolution 820. No harm will be done to your vessel, your crew or your cargo. Over. Hello, Gladman. Do you understand what the charge is? Yes, sir. Uh, do you now plead guilty to the first charge or not guilty uh, of being drunk on shore? Not guilty, sir. Please, sir. And the second charge of uh, behaving with contempt, do you plead guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, sir. Please, sir. And the third charge uh, of use of violence, uh, do you plead guilty or not guilty to not that gu charge? Not guilty, sir. Please, are all the sir. What I'd like to do now, sir, is call POWEA to relate the, his account of the incident, sir. Good position. On the spot. Third man's going now. Third man is going. Good position. Third man is there on the spot. Fourth man is going now. Forward and right, one yard. Good position. Last man's on the spot. You said he came into the pub and came straight up to you. Herbert. Did you see Elwyn Gladman come through the door into the pub? Yes. After about an hour I'd been in there when I saw Elwyn Gladman come in. He appeared drunk to me as he didn't appear that steady on his feet. Upon seeing me, he came straight up to me and started calling me a wanker and gesturing the same in my face. I tried to calm him on this matter. He then slapped me in the face. P.O. Witter at this point was between us. Gladman then came round him and once again punched me on the left side of my face. Which hand did he use? His right hand, I believe, sir. Did you make any other attempt other than remonstrating with him? I asked him to step back, sir, as he looked like he might carry out another attack. When Elwen Gladman called you a wanker, did he do anything else? He was gesturing in my face the same, sir. In your face? Yes, very close to my face. Had you uh, been drinking that night? Yes, I had, sir. I had two glasses of beer. Two glasses of beer. You say Gladman looked very drunk when he came to the bar. What did you, what do you base that information? Well, his general manner was unsteady. He didn't appear to be walking with any purpose. Why do you think he came straight to you and was angry with you? He seemed to have a problem with the fact that I'd only been in for a short amount of time and I was a petty officer. 
He found this point very annoying, sir, and made several comments about this down the mess. So you didn't labour the point at all about being a petty officer and being on the line? I fought my corner on the matter, but it appeared to have been... It didn't appear to amount to anything, because I saw him in corridors days after. We didn't actually speak, but there didn't appear to be any trouble either. Did you fight your corner on this night? No, I didn't. I was extremely sober, and I realised the situation was getting out of hand. And I realised any attempt to argue on my part was only going to inflame the situation more. Kaz, make sure that he stays in contact with you. Entering hold number three now. Why do you think in a, a packed bar that nobody saw your uh, Elwyn Blavin actually strike? Because everyone had been in there quite a while, sir, and most of them weren't paying any attention to it. It's taken you in after the incident. I was very upset about it, sir. I was quite shocked and very angry as well that I'd actually been struck. The thing with Gladys is, is that he's liked by everybody, so nobody wants to see him go over the wall or end up in DQs or anywhere like that. So I wouldn't like to see him go over the wall. I've known him for three years. So, uh, I'd like to think he'll get away with the charges that he's facing because I don't think he's guilty, personally. So, you've got 280 people together living in messes of anything up to 30 people. You're bound to get on each other's nerves. There'll always be one person who will annoy you more than anybody else, I suppose. What I'd like to do now, sir, is call Pierre Witter. Very also Witter! Hello, Sir Witter, would you tell the captain what you know of the incident ashore in Istanbul in that public house? I was in the uh, pub, sir, and I looked across and there was Elwyn Gladman and the pets <laughs> were arguing. I walked over to see what was happening and the <laughs> was actually very near a very distressed state. He was crying, asked him what was the matter, and he actually said that Elwyn Gladman had hit him. And I actually said to Elwyn Gladman, you've made your point, you know, now I've got back on my board, isn't that, is that good, sir? Um, basically, that was it for the actual incident. Um, Who was it? How was Elwyn Gladman behaving? In what way, sir? How was he behaving? Animatedly, quietly? Well, uh, the finger was out, sir. Say again? finger was out, sir. A finger. Yeah, Whose finger? Uh, on Gladman, sir. And whereabouts was it? Well, you know, in front of him, sir. How far away from Peel Wyatt's face? Well, about this far, sir. We're talking. Or are you, sir? What was he doing with his finger? I get it, sir. Right. How would... Sorry, where were you at this point? I was facing the bar, the boat, say from me to you, sir. You were this close to... Away from the actual truth, sir. They were in a corner by the uh, patio doors at the back of the pub, sir. Right. Did you have your back to them, or were you facing them? Initially, sir, I had my back to them. Why did you stand between them? quite heated, sir. So it's just a precaution, really. What was concerning you? That something might happen, sir. What do you mean, something might happen? Well, if, if there's an argument going, sir, people that be as normally end up fighting them, sir. Did you see any physical contact between the two of them? No, sir. Did you see anything that could be construed as such? Sorry. At the end of the uh, incident, what was the state of your Very distraught, sir. So sobbing. He was like a ventilator and he was in a, a right state, sir. Did you have to say anything? I did, sir, to sort his life out, basically. It was embarrassing seeing a grown man being talked to by a lean hand and crying his eyes out, sir. It was embarrassing. The punishment in the Navy is very black and white. The best that can happen to Gladys is all the charges can be dropped. Insufficient evidence. Uh, the worst can be going over the wall, losing his rate. Maybe even kicked out of the Navy, you never know. Nobody wants to see him go over the wall. Paul Glamour, I've heard the uh, case for the prosecution of these three charges and I now come to the point of deciding whether the case which needs to be answered. And having heard the evidence, I'm going to dismiss the charge of being drunk on shore. And on the other two charges, uh, I'm going to call a standover uh, and I want to look at uh, an appropriate lesser charge and when that's been framed, it'll be given to you in your DO to consider and the table will then be reconvened. Do you understand? Yes, sir. So. Stand away. Pull the on cap. Right wheel turn. Right wheel quick march. It's frightening. Yeah, it's frightening. That's just you. Everybody looking at you. Yeah.
and they're talking about you and, and over you and around you. What are you thinking about all that time? Are you just keeping your mind on it or are you letting yourself drift away somewhere? Uh, I thought of various things while I was in there actually. Uh, to be quite honest, I was looking at the uh, seawall voice and I was thinking that it could do with a coat of paint in some of the places, but, uh, but that was just my mind drifting off that was. And then I was all, I got back to the seriousness of it all. And, but don't ask me why I thought that, but uh, that's the way it goes. I'm going to go and have a cup of tea, a well earned cup of tea. What's the crack then? Uh, get on. Well, drop, drop the drunk a short charge. What did get? And uh, they're, they're lowering the other two charges to uh, possibly uh, uh, provocation and that sort of thing. We've basically, got me on for being well, an naughty boy. They're definitely going to get you on some then, aren't they? They want to. Yeah, well. They've got to prove whatever the next charge is yet. So half of it's gone then. So, I mean, it's already gone down from assault to, uh, to various other bits and bobs. If it carries on this way, it'll be accused of buying him a drink or something yeah. like that. I think. Getting the round up. <laughs> yeah, very possibly. What did you put? What did you put on the sweepstake? All the charges dismissed, apart from uh, behaviour. There you get done for the quit of behaviour. Thirty-three percent so far. You're winning. So best you buy me a beer. I think you still deserve a bloody good spanking. Do you? <laughs> I'll put <for> that. <laughs> well, well, well. Got him on the run there. Got him. Let's get something. We've got a suit stick got here, you know what I mean? There's money involved. So there's one charge. No. Provocative behaviour, I think they're going to go for. Okay, likely to cause a disturbance. Well, then, actually, whether you plead guilty or not guilty of the new charge. Let's have a, another read of the charge. Sure. Threatening behaviour likely to cause a disturbance. Anyway. The, the evidence has come out so far. Okay. The fact that um, you had this argument, that you were the one that was wagging the finger and shouting loudly. A lot of people have said that uh, you know, he was fairly passive. Okay, the fact he went away, came back, can be construed as provocative behaviour. If he started arguing with you, then that would be different. But there's, there's no way at the moment with the information or the witnesses we've got that you can say that. There's nothing to substantiate. You can say it yourself and try and cast out on it that way. Well, I'm not, I'm not guilty. Not guilty. Are you sure? Yeah. Go on, go on, go on. However, I might get up there. So. <laughs> Hello, I'm Gladman. Oh, cat. Hello, I'm Gladman from Stanford, sir. One new charge, then the charge reads. Did on the 2nd of November 1994, without reasonable excuse, use provocative behaviour likely to cause a disturbance. I'm glad we don't understand this new charge. Yes, sir. Uh, do you plead guilty or not guilty to that charge? Guilty, sir. Please report, sir. Right. Do you give any mitigation, any statement you wish to make? Do you want to, yes, the DVA to speak to you? DVA, I'll speak to you. DVA. Sir, on the evening of the 2nd of November, uh, Elwyn Bladman had been out to the casino in Istanbul. He had won a substantial amount of money. It's a previous argument that's gone on, sir. They've had an argument about it before. Owen Gladman was uh, pretty distraught at losing the money, sir. His relationship broke up, leaving him with a large mortgage, sir, so he feels the loss of money quite hard. He admits that by going back and continuing argument, he is guilty of the charge, sir. Uh, he regrets the incident. I've been assured that this uh, incident will not happen again, sir. Owen Gladman, I'm satisfied that on that particular evening, as the charge states, without reason excuse, did use provocative behaviour, like the cause of disturbance. And I'm also well and truly satisfied that a disturbance occurred. What was not clear in the way the table ran was exactly what happened, and uh, I was not content in terms of uh, proof uh, on uh, any of the previous three charges that were in front of you, hence they were dismissed. However, I expect everybody to behave in a responsible way, and, and you didn't, right? I, you want to get sorted out, right? You want to get, you, you, everyone's got to live together in a ship, and if they meet ashore, or as, as this ship does frequently, people uh, find a certain bar, and uh, the whole idea of going to a similar bar is for general camaraderie and general relaxation, but as friends, right? And if you do harbour any difficulties with other people, 
you've got to be responsible enough to actually behave in the correct way, right? Yes, sir. Otherwise, you know, you, you're not worthy of having a, a hook on your arm. Find 150 pounds. Find 150 pounds or one penny, sir. One penny. Recovered or one penny. To pull that on the cat. Right, turn, right wheel, quick march. What are you getting, guys? Hey, what are you getting? 150 pound fine. It's not bad, is it, from attending manslaughter? Down at that bugger. How'd you get on there? <coughs> uh, 150 pound fine. And that's it. That's a lot. Still yeah. got your badge? Still got my badge. Right. Yeah. Beat the system. Yeah. That's all that counts. <laughs> Beat the system. Yeah, I'll get some money for his present. Yeah, it's ain't dying, isn't it? Yeah, because I'm skipping. Oh, I will be. Wee! £150 fine. Is that it? Is that it? Walked it, mate. Walk in the park. Oh, jammy bastard. Walk in the park. Walk in the park. Walk in the park. Fucking kick that side. Must be worth the beer. He's one of these buggers. Oh, I tell you what, that's golden, that is. Absolutely golden. Did you just have me $450? Yeah. Out of one payday. Oh, Donald Rett, single you killing. You're well let off from there, weren't you? So, oh, I know if you got oh, that, right. I don't know. What did the skipper say? Well, I'd have pleaded not guilty to this. Uh, guilty to this one. Did you? I wouldn't have got away with not guilty. And after swanning so many charges. Oh. You know, he said, we've got to stop somewhere like him. Come on, Gladys. Just take this one. I can't <laughs> be doing with the rigmarole. Oh, dear. I think you've got away quite right Golden bollocks, mate. Golden bollocks. <laughs> right, lads. Y'all know what Gladys got. 150 quid to rubber. Quick look through the list to see who's won the, the wad, as it were. Right, Sharky, 400 quid. Yeah, you're a bit off. Your mail's off. 500 and lost a badge. Nose, 410 days. Guy, 350, 7 days. Phil, 350. Dean, 5 days. Tw 200 quid, Dean. It's not bad. Hello. Woo! Stu, 220. Chats, case dismissed due to lack of evidence. 400 due to behaviour. Andy Conway. It's 200 quid, loss of badge, and a bloody good spanking. <laughs> <laughs> I prefer that one. Who do you reckon? Nearest fine? I mean, that is Andy Conway with 200 quid gets it then. There was no charges for the pump action shotgun then? No, no, they didn't catch me on that. I wiped my prints off of that. <laughs> good morning, First Dan speaking. At 10 o'clock this morning, an Italian helicopter will be coming in from area Montenegro, carrying our NATO squadron commander, Commodore Van der Luke. He's taking the opportunity, before we were relieved from area by the Dutch ship Bondelaar, to visit and to say a few words to us about the operation out here and our contribution to it. That's all. Good morning, Commodore speaking. Within a week now, Brilliant's deployment in the standard format will end and you will hand your experience over to another Royal Navy unit. Your very valuable contribution to the operations in the Adriatic will then be history and you will undoubtedly be looking forward to the end of the year when you will celebrate so many special days with people of your own choosing. I'm also convinced that during one of those days, you will look back and ask yourself, why did we do all this? Be aware then that this operation is one of the things that we can do to make life a little better now. And hopefully much better in the future for all those people that live on the eastern side of the Adriatic. I very much wanted to pay this last visit and have the opportunity to thank you for your contribution to this force before you go home. I'm proud of Brilliant. It was both a pleasure and a reassurance to have you around. Thank you very much. That's all. Tomorrow we will no longer be in any operational areas. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's like a big sigh of relief. It's like, well, you know, thank God this shit is over. You know, because it's, to a lot of us <coughs> out here, it hasn't meant anything. It's a complete waste of time. They don't want it at all. But we don't seem to be doing anything. We just seem to be, oh, we're boarding ships and... Yeah, but that's what we're here for. Yeah, It's well, not a waste of time, because I, I'm sorry, but I still believe it's a deterrent. All right, it doesn't, it doesn't affect you or I, but it affects the people over there. So I do believe we're doing a good job.
Uh, this is brilliant. Uh, are you ready to assume duties for area F all over? Six months bloody hard work. <laughs> Over and out. <laughs> well, it's the end of our final patrol, and the ships ships done jolly well in uh, keeping going uh, over a long deployment in a fairly repetitive task. There have been variations. We've had some good visits, uh, things to break it up, and professionally, there have been a lot of rewards. We've been out here six months now, guarding a country we can't even spell, and uh, today's the day we finally get relieved. Every mile we do now is a mile closer to home. The worst part's over now, it's all downhill going on. That's it, just the home straight, Gibraltar. The highlight of the whole trip is going to be fantastic. Bay of Biscay, it's Western Approaches, and we're there. Edderston Lighthouse, and then you know you're home when you see Edderston. And I'm getting soaking wet, by the way. <laughs> is this for effect? you got some bloke out there chugging water at me. Keeping and making the peace is a vital and honourable activity to which we're all committed. No one can justify war, but so many human predicaments teach us it is often the lesser of two evils. There have only been two years in the peace that followed the surrender of Japan in 1945, in which no British servicemen and women have not lost their lives. Let us remember before God and commend to his sure keeping those who have died for their country in war. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. <laughs>